Rowe with WrenchWiki.com. Today we're going to start talking about collecting wrenches, focus on different types of wrenches. To start with, we'll look at one. This is called a Hewitt Union. This was made, patented about 1860, very collectible wrench, pretty hard to find. If you're out collecting wrenches, you're going to run into some of these. This is called a hydrant wrench, made for water faucets, come in different shapes. A lot of these have a five-sided opening. Here's one, just has holes in it. I have a specialty wrench here. This is a lineman's wrench. If you worked for the phone company as a pole climber, you would have carried one of these with you. Bicycle wrench, also called a pocket wrench. You're going to see a lot of these. A lot of different companies made them. A lot of companies that didn't make the wrench still had their name stamped in it. You could concentrate just on bicycle wrenches or pocket wrenches. This is a common design of a pocket wrench. Here's one quite a bit older. You have a hand forged wrench. In the early days you couldn't just go out and buy wrenches. They had nuts and bolts before they had wrenches, so you had to make your own. Real Road especially made those. All right. Some wrenches had two sizes in the same wrench. This is called a Baxter wrench. Person's name Baxter actually designed this, but then other people started making them. Here's another example. Very heavily built Baxter style wrench. One of the most one of the most desirable types of wrenches is called a quick adjust. This one's made just to slide to size. Here's a variation where you would raise the lever, adjust it to size, put the lever back down. And then here is one that can be adjusted quickly to size and then torqued down a little tighter to actually clamp it to the boulder nut. It's nice. This is called a dog bone. This one's actually name brand handy. It's a handy little wrench because you have eight different sizes all in one spot. Now let's look at carriage or buggy wrenches. You had to take the hub off of your wagon and grease it every day if you used it hard. This is the common type of a buggy wrench. You're going to see these by the hundreds. Nothing rare about those. Another style. This one fairly common. Although there are some of these with the company name on it that are hard to find. Here we have a Sheldon Axle. Sheldon was a buggy maker. That's a good wrench. This one, unmarked, but if you collect wrenches, you'll know this is a Miller's Falls. And here we have a Joy, a little more complex wrench. Hard to find, but very much sought after. Let's look at four wrenches. Now, if you bought a Model T, you got a wrench kit with it, tool kit, and they made a million Model T's, so you have a million wrenches that have been made, so there's nothing scarce about four wrenches. They do, there's a couple examples, there's quite a bit of difference, large logo, small logo. This one came with a tractor, has inch marks. A lot of folks out there think you stuck this in the gas tank to measure how much fuel you had left. Really not a good idea to stick a steel wrench in a tank full of gas. What it was made for is to set your plow depth. This is a plow wrench. This is called an automotive wrench. Mark Ford. Let's 
look at a few agricultural wrenches. Here we have a brown manly, not marked, has, does have a 1AA on it. If you decide to start collecting wrenches, this is probably the most common of all. You're going to see a lot of these. This is a John Deere wrench, not marked John Deere, just has a number on it. If you don't collect wrenches, you might look over this, but if you are a wrench collector, you'll recognize that as a John Deere wrench. We have one with a little tab on it. This is called a Pittman wrench. A Pittman arm connected a flywheel with your sickle bar on your hay mower. So, Pittman wrench. This one is called a Deering style. This one is actually a Deering. If you think of Deering and John Deere, they don't really go together. Deering was one of the original companies that made up International Harvester in the early years. So since they made so many with Deering on them, it became known as a Deering style wrench. Here's one Deering style haze. They exist a lot of different company names on those. Now, if you were to start collecting wrenches, you might look at cutouts. Here we have a Planet Junior and an Iron Age. These are two of the more common cutout wrenches. They didn't make a lot of cutouts. Some collectors specialize in just cutout wrenches. Hard to find, a little bit expensive, but your collection size would be much, much smaller. This is known as a plow wrench. This is a wired plow. Similar style, but the style itself is known as a plow wrench. Here's another common style of an agricultural wrench. Several companies had this same wrench with their name on it. Here's a Moline. Typical a lot of folks like agricultural wrenches just because of the fancy shapes. Probably what me what attracted me to agricultural wrenches was the unique shape of the wrenches. You'll see this one. Several different companies put their name on this one. And you'll see stamped steel. These were cheap to make. This is a John Deere wrench, but not worth a whole lot. Stamped steel doesn't seem to be real valuable. You run into a lot of these. Uh, commonly called a spud wrench. The actual name would be a structural wrench or a construction wrench. Since all the sleepless nights you spent wondering, I'll tell you. The structural wrench has straight jaws. The construction wrench has jaws angled at 15 degrees. Now you know. All right, I'll jump ahead to automotive. This was a round handle made in the 30s and 40s. A little larger round handled wrench. Collectors tend to like their tools very small or very large. Nothing much in the middle. Nice addition to your collection there. You have an S handle. Commonly made. 30s and 40s, not so much now, nothing rare about an S-handle wrench. We have a drain plug wrench. Just a simple wrench made to fit every conceivable size of a drain plug. Okay, let's start. Alright, what's commonly called a monkey wrench? This was the earlier design, very simple. Next step up, much more durable, sturdier wrench. And that evolved into the more common, this is called a knife handle because of the wood being in two pieces on each side. A lot of people call an adjustable wrench a monkey wrench. This is an adjustable wrench, often called a crescent wrench. Crescent was a brand name. 
these very handy wrench and made by the millions. The early ones often had an S handle. Don't go out and pay twenty and thirty dollars for these. They exist in big numbers. A little harder to find are the curved handle adjustables. Here we have a little more modern. This is a ratcheting wrench. You adjust the jaws here, jaws on the bottom, and it ratchets. So you only need the one wrench. You don't need a whole tray full of sockets. Okay. These, this type of an adjustable wrench was made early on in the 1800s, often called a ratcheting wrench, not that the wrench has the ratchet as the one we just saw, but because you continually work it, also called a pipe wrench, often made them in all kinds of mechanical variations. This one gives another ratcheting wrench. This one's made by Heller. Here we have one size by a gear inside it adjusts the jaws. What draws a lot of people to collecting wrenches is the embossing. Here's Wayne Pump. And here we have USMC. Uh, everybody who doesn't collect wrenches thinks that's the United States Marine Corps. If you do collect wrenches, you know that as United Shoe Machine Company. These exist in big numbers. And we'll finish off. This one's made for tubing. You put the little cutout over the tube and works your fittings. That's it for